Okay, so today I'm going to be discussing envelope generators on analog synthesizers. Envelope generators also are found on digital synthesizers, so most of what I say here will apply to digital synthesizers and software synthesizers as well as to analog synthesizers. I will be demonstrating an envelope generator on the Korg MS-10 analog synthesizer. An envelope generator is a controller on a synthesizer that allows the synthesis, that's you and me, allows the synthesis to determine how a particular aspect of sound is shaped or modified over time. In other words, it allows you to set a contour for changes in a particular aspect of sound over time. Typical applications for an envelope generator, also known as an EG in synthesis terms, are to shape the contour of the volume or the pitch or the timbre of a sound over time. To understand how an envelope generator works, let's first take a quick look at how a synthesizer creates sounds in the first place. The three most basic components or aspects of sound, at least when we discuss musically interesting sound or musically useful sound, are volume, pitch, and timbre, also known as tone quality. Volume, of course, you're all familiar with, refers to the loudness of a note. Uh, whether it's louder or softer or somewhere in between, that's considered the volume. The pitch of the note basically des describes the various notes on a musical scale. Um, as you go from left to right across a piano keyboard, uh, you're getting higher in pitch. I think you all understand what, what that is. Um, <clears throat> the pitch of a note is actually determined by the frequency of the note. In other words, how many cycles the particular waveform uh, goes through in, in any given second. Frequency is the number of cycles per second, also known as hertz, of a given sound wave. Um, the higher the frequency, the higher the pitch, and vice versa. Timbre is a bit more complex than volume and pitch. Timbre is the particular sound quality of an instrument or a voice. So for example, we could have a piano playing an, an A below middle C, that's a 440 hertz pitch. But I mean, if you played that same note on a trumpet or a violin at the same volume, the pitch and the volume could be identical but you can easily distinguish a piano from a violin or a trumpet or a human voice for that matter by the timbre of the instrument generating the sound. The timbre of an instrument also known as or of, of a human voice is actually determined by the harmonics or overtones that are present on top of or in addition to the fundamental. So when we talk about that same A, 440 hertz A, on a piano versus on a violin, a trumpet, or a human voice, or a guitar, they all have that basic fundamental note present. So the 440 hertz A is present. But each one of those instruments has, in addition to the principal, harmonics or overtones. These are higher frequencies generally, that are added in which help to make up the character of the sound. So, And this is determined by the construction of the instrument or the materials used in the construction of the instrument. So that you've got a piano with its uh, strings, probably a cast iron frame and wood. It's going to have different overtones, different harmonics that are vibrating in addition to that fundamental than would a violin. In its instrument, it's a different size, a different shape, uh, 
different construction, different materials, same as a human voice box, or th your throat, I guess, and also a trumpet. These all instruments are made up of different materials so that once that principal note is vibrating, it sets up other vibrations in the instrument. And sound is basically vibrations. So you're getting all these additional harmonics on top of the principal, and that's generally what goes to make up the tone or timbre or tonal quality of an instrument or a voice. Um, <clears throat> I'll have a, another video later that discusses more in depth timbre and harmonics. For now, it's enough to know that each instrument will have its own timbre or tonal quality that will distinguish it from other instruments even if they play the exact same note at the exact same volume. So, how does a synthesizer generate sounds? Well, a synthesizer can be set to control or to determine each of these three aspects of sound using the three most basic controllers on a synthesizer. Number one, an oscillator. On analog synthesizers, these are generally also referred to as voltage-controlled oscillators, or VCOs. The oscillator determines the pitch of the note by determining its frequency. The frequency at which the oscillator oscillates will determine what pitch is generated when you press a key on the synthesizer or other controller on a synthesizer. Number two, the amplifier, or voltage-controlled amplifier, controls the amplitude or the volume of the note. And number three, the filter. The filter is really what determines the timbre of a sound generated from a synthesizer. The way that the filter or voltage controlled filter, VCF, controls the timbre is by filtering out certain harmonics above or below a certain cutoff point or a set of cutoff points. Um, <clears throat> there are different types of voltage-controlled filters. A high-pass voltage-controlled filter, HPF. See, we, we synthesists have a lot of acronyms that we use, and so you get used to it. A VCF is a voltage-controlled filter. You've got your HPF, which is a high-pass filter, and what that does is once you determine the frequency cutoff point, it will allow all frequencies above that cutoff point to pass through the filter while cutting off frequencies below that cutoff point at, at a varying rate. A low pass filter, LPF, obviously which is the opposite of a high pass filter. What a low pass filter does is to, once you set the frequency cutoff point, all frequencies below that cutoff point are allowed to pass through the filter so they will continue to be heard while all frequencies above that frequency cutoff point will be filtered out on a gradual scale. There's also something called a band pass filter. A band pass filter sets two frequency cutoff points and then all of the frequencies above the higher frequency cutoff point are filtered out all of the frequencies below the lower frequency cutoff point are filtered out and then all of the frequencies in between those two frequency cutoff points are allowed to pass through. So that's called a band pass filter. And then the opposite of that is something called a notch um, where basically all frequencies above the higher frequency point are allowed to pass through. All frequencies below the lower frequency cutoff point are allowed to pass through and all the frequencies in between those two cutoff points are filtered out. Now, I'm going to demonstrate on the Korg each of these, uh, each of these controls. When holding down a note, if we change the oscillator frequency, we will change the pitch of that note.
set it back to approximately standard here. Okay, so that was the voltage controlled oscillator. By changing the fine tuning of the pitch, we're changing the, uh, the, the fine tuning the oscillator frequency, we're changing the uh, pitch. We also control the, uh, the range, so by octaves, we've got, I'm holding down the same note, and we've got a 32 foot octave, 16 foot, which is one octave above that, 8 foot, one octave above that, and finally, 4 foot. So what we're doing with the uh, scaling is we're changing the entire scale of the keyboard up or down an octave either way. And we've got a four octave range that we can, we can change through. Okay, next, the amplifier is controlled by the volume on the Korg. So obviously um, holding down a note, we can turn it down so that you hear nothing. Turn it up pretty loud back down. That's the amplifier. And now the filter. This is where it starts to get fun. So what I'm going to do is this is the filter section here. Voltage controlled low pass filter. So on the Korg we have a low pass filter and, and again as mentioned earlier the low pass filter will um, cut off all frequencies or filter out all frequencies above a certain frequency which is known as the cutoff frequency and it will allow all frequencies below that cutoff point to pass through. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll demonstrate. I'll hold down a note and by <clears throat> When I hold the note, by changing the frequency cutoff point, you're going to hear a, an effect. So as you can see, um, when we get all the way down to zero, if the frequency is zero, there's nothing below that. That's why you're not hearing any sound at this point. Um, but as I hold down the note, as I turn this up, you're hearing some low frequencies. Higher frequencies start to come back in as the filter is opened up. Opens up all the way. Little wah-wah effect there. Okay, so these examples I just showed were examples of me manually um, altering these aspects of the sound. So by changing the octave range or the fine tuning, I'm changing the frequency of the oscillator which is changing the pitch of the note that's being generated um, while holding down the same key, by the way. By changing the um, volume I am changing obviously how loud the loudness of the note from loud to soft and soft to loud all the way down to zero and by changing the um, cutoff frequency I'm changing the tonal quality or the timbre of that note now just as a side note uh, these dials that you see are basically potentiometers also known as POTS. And basically what they do is they control the amount of voltage being applied across a given circuit. So that's why these are referred to as voltage controlled. Voltage controlled amplifier, voltage controlled oscillator, and a voltage controlled filter. Now on the voltage control of the oscillator, the higher the voltage, the higher the pitch. So when you use the potentiometer to increase or decrease or attenuate the voltage being applied across the oscillator you're basically the amount of frequency determines the amount or I'm sorry the amount of voltage is going to determine the amount of frequency so by increasing the voltage you're increasing the frequency by using these pots uh, same thing with the amplifier a voltage controlled amplifier the more voltage being applied the greater the volume 
So the amount of voltage is controlling the amount of volume. And the same thing with the filter. The greater the voltage, um, as we go towards 10 here, the greater the voltage, the higher the cutoff frequency point. And therefore, the more frequencies that are allowed to pass through this filter. This is opened up all the way. And as we decrease the voltage, um, that frequency cutoff point goes back down to zero. So it's a voltage controlled filter. The amount of voltage controls the frequency cutoff point for that filter. Now again, what I've demonstrated is by manually changing these uh, attenuators or pots, these dials we have on the synthesizer, by manually changing them, uh, we're changing the character of the sound by either changing its pitch, its volume, or its timbre. Um, or, you know, we can change those simultaneously, one or more of those aspects. Now, the heart of this video is envelope generators. If we can use these pots to change the aspect of these various aspects of sound, um, the envelope generator, what that does is it allows us to predetermine the contour or the shape of changes over time. In other words, the envelope generator allows us to tell the synthesizer how we want those changes uh, in, in sound to be made over time, and it allows the synthesizer to do that for us without using the dials here, okay? Now this is useful for a couple reasons. Number one, it frees up your hands to actually play the keyboard. Um, you know, you can play the keyboard with one hand and, and work one of these pots with your other hand, but sometimes you want to be playing more than one keyboard at a time, so you want to free up your hands. Uh, that, that allows you to play a couple different keyboards and allow the, the tone to change over time, uh, which is very useful. Additionally, using an envelope generator allows you to, do, to make these changes consistently. If you, if you need to make a, a change and you want it to be consistent every time you hit that note, um, you know, it's more consistent to have the synthesizer make these changes rather than trying to make it on your own. Sometimes, you know, you want that imperfection, but sometimes you want very precise changes over time, and that's when you would use an envelope generator. That or when you need to free up your hands to, to play uh, Rick Wakeman style or Keith Emerson style you know, with both hands. So, as a side note, obviously there's even more precision in these changes over time will be allowed on a digital synthesizer. Um, digital synthesizers allow you to make precise changes in terms of microseconds or beats per second versus on these old analog synthesizers. Um, oftentimes there are no discrete uh, steps so there's a continuous spectrum of settings and it's it's very difficult to um <clears throat> to to time up with a, a digital drum track or a, a metronome or a click track so you know digital synthesizers allow you to make even more precise changes over time uh, the other thing about digital synthesizers or even some more recent uh some later model analog synthesizers are that you can save your settings for later recall. On synthesizer like the MS-10, uh, you, you need to be able to make all these changes manually. There is no memory. You cannot store your settings. So every time you call this up, every time you want to call up a particular sound or a particular scene, you need to set these controls manually.